Perseverance has not found aliens or even a fossilized bone, but as detailed in a newly released paper and announced by NASA this week, it may have found evidence for long-dead microbes that lived in the mud of an ancient river. On this episode of Mars Guy. Regular viewers of this channel may be experiencing deja vu, given that I already covered this discovery more than a year ago. But the wheels of science, or in this case nature, move slowly. It can take several months or even years to go from a discovery to a published paper that's been carefully reviewed by experts in the field. The peer review process is what helps make published science more reliable. The published paper in this case includes details that weren't available when I originally presented this discovery. It covers stops made by Perseverance that span the width of Neretva Vallis, a channel carved through the rim of Jezero Crater by flowing water billions of years ago. Now, thanks to data from the ground-penetrating radar instrument on Perseverance, known as RIMFAX, we've got a subsurface picture of the rocks of the terrain dubbed Bright Angel, named after a creek in Arizona's Grand Canyon. RIMFAX shows concave uplayers that were deposited in the channel, not exposed by the channel after it was cut. This means that the rocks in this story were originally sediments at the bottom of a river. Later, after the river dried up, the sediments turned to stone. Mudstone, actually. Here's Mars Guy for scale. Mudstone just means that individual grains can't be seen by the naked eye, and in this case, they're smaller than the resolution of the cameras of Perseverance, so about 100 microns or less. Sometime after lithification, the mudstones fractured, opening roughly parallel cracks that filled with calcium sulfate and the detritus of rocks, including greenish translucent olivine grains. This indicates another period of time during which water was present. But it's the mudstone between the veins that's more exciting. That's where little dark specks, informally referred to as poppy seeds, and larger but still tiny light tone spots with dark rims that look like leopard spots, have caused a buzz about life. And that's because they're made of minerals with reduced iron and sulfur that make them stand out against the surrounding oxidized iron of the mudstone. Think of it like encountering rusty iron that has little spots that aren't rusty. The mudstone has the reddish hue of oxidized iron, while the poppy seeds and leopard spots don't. Also important to the story is that the oxidized mudstone contains some kind of organic matter. On Earth, this combination of features could be readily interpreted as the result of the metabolic activity of microorganisms living in mud. They essentially eat the organic matter, which oxidizes it, with the resulting electrons passed to iron and sulfur-bearing minerals, which reduces their electronic charge. But we're looking at Mars here, so a non-biologic origin has to be considered first, given that life on Mars has never been confirmed. The team identified abiotic paths to the observed features, but these have requirements that aren't necessarily met or apparent in Retva Vallis. Ultimately, a sample of this rock would need to be returned to Earth to address the life versus not life questions that it's raised. This is the exact scenario that underpins the Perseverance mission to collect samples for return to Earth. A sample of Bright Angel Rock has been collected and stored in a hermetically sealed tube on board Perseverance, which now awaits congressional approval and the national will to return it and a few dozen other samples painstakingly collected by Perseverance. The potential spots of life discovered by Perseverance will retain that adjective, a sort of asterisk in the exploration of Mars until they can be explored on Earth.